Chair Yellen, welcome back to the committee. And um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, uh, the low rate policy that uh, the Federal Reserve has pursued now for, uh, well, it's a effectively almost a zero uh, uh, short-term interest rate policy that the Federal Reserve has pursued now for six years. Um, one of the original targets that the Fed set to begin raising rates was when an unemployment uh, reached six, six and a half percent. We are well below that target now, as you testified today, about 5.3 percent unemployment. And I appreciate your testimony that, uh, testimony that you expect to raise the target federal funds rate gradually by the end of this year. But what I want to explore are the reasons why the Fed has delayed normalizing monetary policy beyond the point that you originally targeted for increasing rates and what that says about a few issues. First of all, what does it say about um, the unpredictability of Fed policy? And I appreciated your testimony that effective communication is critical, that transparency is desirable. But doesn't the fact that uh, we are below 6.5 percent unemployment now for almost a year and a half and you still haven't raised rates, doesn't that undermine uh, the commitment to transparency and the commitment to, to communication? Well, I want to make clear that the 6.5 percent was never a target that we said we, in, we never said we intended to raise rates when unemployment fell to 6.5 percent. Instead, we said it was a threshold. And if unemployment was above that level and inflation was well under control, we would not raise rates. That once yeah. unemployment fell below that level, we would then begin to consider whether it was appropriate yeah, to raise rates. And we have followed that policy. And um, it, yeah, we never said that it was I a target that. at which we would be. I understand to raise that. And I, I, and I appreciate the caveats. And I, I, I appreciate well, the caveats. You're very good caveat. at caveats. It's you're very good at caveats. I appreciate that. But I think that that brings me to my second point, which is that a full six and a half years after the recovery, even though we've seen a decline in unemployment, as you acknowledge, there's slack in the labor market and there are significant, significant weaknesses in the labor market, in the, in the overall economy. In fact, a recent Investors Business Daily article said that the overall growth in the 23 quarters of the Obama recovery has been 13.3 percent. That's less than half the average growth rate achieved at this point in the previous 10 recoveries since World War II. Looked at another way, had the Obama recovery been merely average, GDP would be $1.9 trillion larger than today. That translates into $16,000 per household. And I think you recognize this in your, in your report, uh, saying that uh, the measure of labor under, underutilization remains elevated relative to the unemployment rate. And that would explain why you've invoked that caveat and haven't raised the, the, the rates, even though you came below that 6.5 percent. So I understand that analysis. But let's talk about the cause of that underlying weakness. It's, it's clearly not monetary policy from the standpoint, from your standpoint, because you've you've engaged in these extraordinary measures, six years of zero rates, uh, very accommodative policy, bond buying, quantitative easing. Shouldn't we start looking at fiscal policy? Obamacare, which CBA, CBO says is contracting employment by two and a half million jobs, the 30-hour work week, which is forcing people to go part time, the EPA's rationing of energy. 8,000 lost coal miners in my state, and, and, and we're, we're losing employment by the, by the day. Dodd-Frank, American Action Forum says that over the next 10 years, Dodd-Frank will reduce GDP output by almost a trillion dollars. And just last week, one of your colleagues on the Federal Reserve Board, Governor Lael Brainerd, acknowledged that regulations may be a factor in diminished fixed income liquidity in the capital markets. You know, you're, the Federal Reserve has gone to extraordinary lengths to produce robust economic growth, and yet we see this lag and this slack, as you say. Shouldn't we start diagnosing the problem differently, that this is a fiscal policy disaster? Well, of course, it's appropriate to look at why we've had such a slow recovery. It really has been painstakingly slow um, getting the economy to the point where unemployment is 5.3 percent. Um, remember, we had a devastating financial crisis. It took a huge toll on households, left many of them struggling with debt, with massive um, losses in wealth underwater on their mortgages. They've been trying to get that debt under control. Well, Businesses have been very 
cautious about investing. We are and I've got partly living with left. the headwinds from that crisis. Just one but final point. I think you know, low, low rates are not the problem. And in fact, what I'm concerned about now is that because we've delayed raising rates below that 6.5 percent unemployment rate, now we have no tools left. And what's your response now if we go back into recession with a $4.5 trillion balance sheet and zero rates? We have no tools to address the next recession. The time, the time of the gentleman has expired. It's the chair now recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Murphy.